Today we're going to improve 3D printing quality. Let's go! So in my last video about upgrading this turbocharged 3D printing head here, which works great by the way, I got called out hard on the print quality of the fan shroud here. Which looks pretty good when you have direct lighting from the front, but when you switch that lighting from the top facing down, all these layer lines start to pop out at you. So I did what any sane normal person would do, and I printed about 5,300 test prints to see what was causing these issues. Okay, so maybe it wasn't that many prints, but I did print enough to see what actually made a difference. So if you're going to make high quality 3D prints, you need to start out with a strong base. So we're going to go check all the mechanics on the 3D printer. First is the Y belt and the X belt. Make sure those are tight enough. And if they're not, go ahead and tighten those up. Next, check all the roller wheels. Make sure everything's tight there. We don't have a wobbly printing head. The bed roller wheels are tight and firm. And the roller wheels on the gantry are snug and well supported. Make sure there's no loose or wobbly pulleys. Those can really wreak havoc on your prints. Your Z-axis rods are lubed up to prevent extra friction. And finally, to make sure everything is square on your 3D printer. It's important to check the height of this horizontal gantry. I found that sometimes if one end is sagging down a little bit, it'll cause some squished layers on wider prints. It looks like here the right side needs to be adjusted a little bit. So if you have the dual Z-axis upgrade like me, you'll want to unplug one of the stepper motors, slightly adjust it by hand manually, re-plug it back in and check again. Also, it's very important to check the connections on this horizontal printer gantry here. This steel plate connects this vertical post to that. On my Ender 3, I found that these were not assembled squarely from the factory, so I had to actually disassemble it, straighten it out, and get those connected properly. And this is the type of defect we can expect to see when your mechanics aren't working well. So the X face looks okay, but we turn over to the Y face and we've got quite a bit of uh, layer shifting going on from the seam of the print here. So then all it took was tightening up the Y belt and that issue was cleared up. All right, so that was a quick run through on some of the basics of mechanical tune-ups. If you're interested, I did make a short series of videos that shows exactly what happens when those mechanical items are out of whack. So you can see that uh, in the description down below. Next up was calibrating the extruder steps. So I've covered this in a video before, so I won't go into too much detail here, but basically we're just going to tell the extruder to spit out 100 millimeters of filament, check how much it actually spit out, and then adjust accordingly. So I'm not exactly sure why, but my value had changed since the last time I did this. So I was actually over extruding by a fair bit here. So I adjusted that from 745 to 690. I'm using an extruder with a gear reduction, so my result is probably quite a bit different than yours, so make sure to do this test on your own. So now it's time to talk about bed adhesion. So it's no secret when it comes to 3D printing that long and large parts love to warp on the bed. Sometimes that can make printing a part like this a major headache. So let's take a look at the most underrated way to fix this. No, it's not hairspray, not glue stick, and certainly not painter tape, but it is. <laughs> That's right, just good old fashioned clean your bed with some dish soap. But that's too easy, right? Does it really work? Well, let's take a look at the results. Well, you look at that, it's as flat as a pancake. And there we have it, a total night and day difference and all we had to do was wash the bed up. All right, now let's get into the main issue we saw with this printing head here. And it's this banding, this horizontal banding we're seeing across different vertical layers. And it's only obvious when you have a vertical light on it, as we can see there. And this printing head is too large to do a bunch of A-B test prints and it takes too long to print. So I designed this simple little test print here that has some different features cut out and as you can see here, seeing the same type of issue happening. So I found from these two printing tests I was able to reduce this issue quite a bit on this print on the right. You can see not as obvious a banding there. And what I changed was the printing speed from 100 millimeters per second to 50 millimeters per second. But I don't think this was the whole story. So let's take a look at this model in Kira. So I'm gonna slice it here and we can see the print preview at 100 millimeters per second speed here. Nothing looks too out of the ordinary, but let's go ahead and change from showing the line type here to showing the actual speed. Okay, now we're seeing a little bit different story here. Would you be surprised if I told you that these bands of different speeds exactly match the printing issues on the model? So basically we're seeing differences in wall quality based on the printing speed. And these blue areas here are more slow printing speeds. But why are they slower there? Well, that is currently a function of the minimum layer time. So right now I have it set as a 10 second minimum layer time for any individual layer. And since these layers are small with less material, it's slowing the printing head down on these layers. So let's go ahead and lower that to two seconds and see how that changes things. Quite a bit better here. 
Now let's adjust it down to one second and we should have everything at exactly the same speed. Now let's go ahead and do a test print with this new even speed printing model. All right, now on the right here, I have this new even speed printing model. And you can see compared to the print on the left, it got rid of these banding areas where the speed was different. Now it's a little bit more consistent throughout the whole print. Just to be clear, I'm not suggesting you should use a one second minimum layer time. That was just for testing purposes. But I just wanted to show an example of how printing different layers at different speeds can have an impact on your printing quality. All right, for the next quality improvement, let's take a look at wall order. So for wall order here, there's two options. You can print the outside walls first and the inside walls second. This is best for dimensional accuracy. Or you can print the inside walls first and the outside walls second. And this way is a little bit better to hide some of the blemishes that may appear in your print. All right, let's compare the results here. On the left, we have outside walls first. And on the right here, we have inside walls first. So from the front face, they look pretty similar. But when we turn over to the seam, uh, the seam is on this back edge here. We can see the inside walls first and the right here really clean that up a lot. So it's a lot better than the uh, left, which was the outside wall first. And onto the next 3D printing quality improvement. You can see here I was printing with this pink filament material. And you'll see for the first four prints here, I was struggling with some uh, under extrusion and the nozzle getting partially plugged up. And finally on the fifth one, I changed something that completely cleared this up. Can you guess what it was? I dried the filament. That's right, after drying the filament, I completely cleared up this issue. So what happened was I left this partially used roll of pink filament lying around the house for a few months and it absorbed some moisture into the filament. And I knew that because when it was printing, I heard some sizzling and popping coming from the extruder, which is a sign of moisture. So I went online and purchased a Sun Lu filament dryer. So this is really easy to operate. All I had to do is take this roll of filament drop it in the base here, feed the filament through this hole on the top, double click to turn it on, go through and set your temperature setting, the amount of time you want to dry the filament for, the type of filament, and then you can go through and turn on or off this LED setting. And once you're ready, you just set it down and wait six hours and your filament will be dried. So now with all these improvements in place, it's time to go back to the original printing head that was giving me these issues, and it's time to go for another reprint to try it again. All right, first impressions are off the print bed. It definitely looks a little bit better. This little block got cleared up here. Uh, let's turn on the vertical light and see what that uncovers. Oh yeah, there's some definite improvement there. This front was really rough. The edge and sides here are a lot more rough. And on this new print, it's definitely not perfect, but it's definitely cleaned up quite a bit. Here's the old one and here's the new one. We can see right away this front face is cleaned up quite a bit. This edge is a lot smoother and we got rid of this blockiness over here on the old one. So now let's take a look on the side. Uh, again, the edges along here are much smoother. We do still have some issues going on in this direction though where it's not as smooth, but overall these edges um, a lot more cleaned up than they were before. And now onto the other side. Again, the edges are much more cleaned up, but this side with this large flat wall, we still see some issues going on here. So I'm going to have to look uh, mechanically, I might still have some issues on the x-axis gantry there. But overall this is a much cleaner looking print and I think we're going to get it installed. So I think I found there's an issue with my x-axis belt. You can see here it starts in the groove at the far right side and as it goes down the track down to here it shifts over to the far left side. So we can see here that belt is all the way to the front side of that pulley and so much so that it's even rubbing on that extrusion down there, which is giving some extra friction and some noise there as well. So yeah, just as I suspected, as soon as I took that motor apart and took the belt off, I saw there was a ton of debris on this extrusion here. We can see here the belt was rubbing on there and even the edge of the belt is worn down over time. So we can see here that the stepper motor and the pulley is mounted too far forward. So I ended up remounting that with some washers in there to space that pulley back. Additionally, I found the belt was mounted too far forward on the mounting bracket here, which was causing some extra skew and grinding on that extrusion. So I ended up sliding that back just a little bit to center that within the extrusion groove. And with these couple of fixes, my x-axis was gliding as smooth as silk. Now with that X-Belt issue cleared up, I reprinted this small wall section and it turned out to be one of my cleanest looking prints so far. But it's still not quite perfect so I decided to take an even deeper look into the mechanics on the printer. 
So I'm using a dial indicator to see how round each of the gears are. So this is the X-belt gear here, and it's within 0.05 millimeters of roundness. Next I looked at the idler gear on the extruder, which was also round within 0.05 millimeters. And finally I looked at the drive gear on the extruder, and this one was almost four times as much deviation, almost up to 0.2 millimeters out of round. And to help explain why it's bad to have sloppy out of round gears, let me make a quick and sloppy example to demonstrate this. So now this sloppy wheel will represent our extruder gear, and the paper will be our filament. So now you can see when I spin the wheel, the filament, or in this case the paper, is moved at not an even speed. And this uneven speed can cause variations within walls of the print. Well, this Orbiter extruder is over a year old, so I'm going to be purchasing a new one and transferring this one to the CR30. So when the new one comes in, I'll see if that helps improve this issue. And now for the final tip, a way I did find to get rid of these ugly looking walls, and that is, don't print with matte filament. Actually use glossy filament instead, and a lot of these artifacts won't show up. Hmm, I wonder if that's why those little free filament rolls they give you with new printers are glossy rolls, so that when you print out your first models, you can't see any of these issues. Okay, that's going to wrap up the video for today. Just a quick summary of what we went through for improved printing quality. Number one, you're going to want to make sure your bed and your printer, everything is mechanically sound. Number two, you're going to want to calibrate your E-steps, make sure that's on point. Number three, clean your bed, have a nice clean bed, good bed adhesion. Number four is printing speed. Slow down your printing speed if you need to and make sure it's a relatively even speed throughout your print. Five, if you want to clean up or hide that Z seam, you can print inside walls first. That'll make that seam much less visible. Number six, always take care of your filament. If your filament's been laying out for a while, use a filament dryer. Make sure that filament is prepped and ready to go. And number seven, use the right type of filament. If you struggle with matte filaments or you struggle with glossy, make sure you pick the one that works for you and that you're comfortable with. So I hope everybody learned something from this video and enjoyed it because I enjoyed making it for you. So as always, stay tuned and I'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions.